Year nine greetings. Welcome back to Lord of the Flies. Let me show you something. I uh, received an email last night from Mr. Kem, who's a teacher here, and uh, I think he heard my joke or something in Lord of the Files a couple of days ago. Look what he made. Isn't he clever? Lord of the Files. I actually thought that read Lord of the Flies when I first saw it and I asked him whether I could use it as a it's just it's too clever for me but uh clever man um let's move on towards uh the beach last lesson we studied this word en enmity I still can't pronounce it correctly but it means um, hostility what's one example of the island's enmity that's revision really and uh, symbols are images that represent an idea. Well, William Golding intended the island to be a symbol for what idea or thing from his mind or his past or the world. Uh, strident, lovely word, strident. It means, yeah, it means you present a point of view in a forceful way, you don't mind sharing controversial points of view, you're headstrong, self-confident and assertive, strident. Um, so bearing that in mind, why do you think Ralph is more confident or strident than Piggy? Think about Ralph's background, his parentage, and try and figure out why he's portrayed as the more strident one, especially compared to Piggy. The orphan, working class orphan, uh, we're going to look at key events of the second half of chapter one and sp um, specifically analyze how the shell is presented. Let me give you your two tasks quickly, or three tasks. You're going to quote five adjectives that describe the shell. You'll remember in the last lesson, we just saw something on the in, in the water and we're picking it up today. Find two quotations that compare how both Ralph and Piggy treat the thing. So one for Ralph and one for Piggy. And then some thinking, which character is the most mature, sensible and respectful? Please explain your answer. May not be as straightforward as you think at the moment, but I suppose after the lesson it will be straightforward. You looked at the enmity of the island and how it has a pleasant side indeed, but sometimes there's threatening, like the pink granite that thrust uncompromisingly through the jungle. And that was your last lesson. So we're going to read page seven and eight now and look for adjectives that describe the shell. Uh, let's leave PowerPoint in that laborious way. Uh, and then try and find ebook anno. This is uh, this is roughly page seven. Yeah, so we we pick we're picking it up here. Some uh, some keywords. Decorous means uh, respectful. Um, uh, a conch is a shell, one of those spiral things that you can blow into. Ink and white. Um, uh, if you listen into them, you can hear the sea. Interpose means placed between, to pose inter, to place between. Irrelevance, I imagine you know that that means it's something insignificant, pointless. A fulcrum means a sort of pivot. Jutting abdomen means a, uh, an abdomen is a, a belly, basically. Jutting means intricacies are complexities. Uh, up an octave, something, a note that flukes up an octave is a note that starts, starts, it's the same note, but higher on the musical stave. Uh, we've done strident. And uh, gorging, if you're gorging something, you're stuffing your face, you're eating ravenously quickly. 
Uh, this is interesting. It's not really any vocabulary, but it's significant that at this stage, a character called Roger, who my um, my contact doctor, what's his name, Dr. Nicola, says that Roger's the most fearsome boy in the book, but he's only presented as a dark little boy here. It's interesting. That's the first we meet Roger. Uh, Tau is like flax, it's dry grass that's been split and it's just a little untidy, a bit like straw, really. So now that we're armed with that knowledge, let's start reading. What is it? A stone? No, a shell. Suddenly, Piggy was a bubble with decorous excitement. That's right, it's a shell. I see one like that before on someone's back wall. A conk, he called it. He used to blow it, and then his mum would come. He's ever so valuable. Near to Ralph's elbow, a palmer sapling leaned out over the lagoon. Indeed, the weight was already pulling a lump from the poor soil, and soon it would fall. He tore out the stem and began to poke about in the water, while the brilliant fish, brilliant fish flicked away on this side and that. Piggy leaned dangerously. Make it! Shut up! Ralph spoke absently. The shell was interesting and pretty and a worthy plaything, but the vivid phantoms of his daydream still interposed between him and Piggy, who in this context was an irrelevance. The palm sapling, bending, pushed the shell across the weeds. Ralph used one hand as a fulcrum and pressed down with the other till the shell rose, dripping, and Piggy could make a grab. Now the shell was no longer a thing seen but not to be touched. Ralph, too, became excited. Piggy babbled. A conk, ever so expensive. I bet if you wanted to buy one, you'd have to pay pounds and pounds and pounds. He had it on his garden wall, and my auntie... Ralph took the shell from Piggy, and a little water ran down his arm. In colour, the shell was deep cream, touched here and there with fading pink, between a point worn away into a little hole, and the pink lips of the mouth lay eighteen inches of shell, with a slight spiral twist, and covered with a delicate embossed pattern. Ralph shook sand out of the deep tube. Move like a cow, he said. He had some white stones too, and a bird cage with a green parrot. He didn't blow the white stones, of course. Then he said, Piggy paused for breath and stroked the glistening thing that lay in Ralph's hands. Ralph, Ralph looked up. We can use this to call the others, have a meeting. They'll come when they... He beamed at Ralph. That was what you meant, didn't you? That's why you got the conk out of the water. Ralph pushed back his fair hair. How does your friend blow the conk? He kind of spat, said Piggy. My auntie wouldn't let me blow on account of my asthma. He said she blew from down here. Piggy laid a hand on his jutting abdomen. You try, Ralph. You'll call the others. Doubtfully, Ralph laid the small end of the shell against his mouth and blew. There came a rushing sound from its mouth, but nothing more. Ralph wiped the salt water off his lips and tried again, but the shell remained silent. He kind of spat. Ralph pursed his lips and squirted air into the shell, which emitted a low farting noise. <clears throat> this amused both boys so much that Ralph went on squirting for some minutes between bouts of laughter. <clears throat> He blew from down here. Ralph grasped the idea and hit the shell with air from his diaphragm. Immediately. The thing sounded. A deep, harsh note boomed under the palms, spread through the intricacies of the forest, and echoed back from the pink granite of the mountain. Clouds of birds rose from the treetops, and something squealed and ran in the undergrowth. Ralph took the shell away from his lips. Gosh. His ordinary voice sounded like a whisper after the harsh note of the conch. 
He laid the conch against his lips, took a deep breath and blew once more. The note boomed again. And then at his firmer pressure, the note, fluking up an octave, became a strident blare, more penetrating than before. Piggy was shouting something, his face pleased, his glasses flashing. The birds cried, small animals scuttered. Ralph's breath failed. The note dropped the octave, became a low wubber. It was a rush of air. The conch was silent, a gleaming tusk. Ralph's face was dark with breathlessness, and the air over the island was full of bird clamour and echoes ringing. I bet you could hear that for miles. Ralph found his breath and blew a series of short blasts. Piggy exclaimed, There's one! A child had appeared among the palms, about a hundred yards along the beach. He was a boy of perhaps six years, sturdy and fair, his clothes torn, his face covered with a sticky mess of fruit. His trousers had been lowered for an obvious purpose and had only been pulled back halfway. He jumped off the palm terrace into the sand and his trousers fell about his ankles. He stepped out of them and trotted to the platform. Piggy helped him up. Meanwhile, Ralph continued to blow till voices shouted in the forest. The small boy squatted in front of Ralph, looking up brightly and vertically. As he received the reassurance of something purposeful being done, he began to look satisfied, and his only clean digit pink thumb slid into his mouth. Piggy leaned down to him. What's your name? Johnny. Piggy muttered the name to himself and then shouted it to Ralph. He was not interested because he was still blowing. His face was as dark with the violent pleasure of making this stupendous noise, and his heart was making the stretched shirt shake. The shouting in the forest was nearer. Signs of life were visible now on the beach. The sand trembling beneath the heat haze concealed many figures in its miles of length. Boys were making their way toward the platform through the hot, dumb sand. Three small children, no older than Johnny, appeared from startlingly close at hand where they'd been gorging fruit in the forest. A dark little boy, not much younger than Piggy, parted a tangle of undergrowth, walked to the platform and smiled cheerfully at everybody. More and more of them came. Taking their cue from the innocent Johnny, they sat down on the fallen palm trunks and waited. Ralph continued to blow short, penetrating blasts. Piggy moved among the crowd, asking names and frowning to remember them. The children gave him the same simple obedience that they had given to the men with megaphones. Some were naked and carrying their clothes, others half naked or more or less dressed in school uniforms, grey, blue, fawn, jacketed or jerseyed. There were badges, mottos even, stripes of colour in stockings and pullovers. Their heads clustered above the trunks in the green shade. Heads brown, fair, black, chestnut, sandy, mouse-coloured, heads muttering, whispering, heads full of eyes that watched Ralph and speculated. Something was being done. The children who came along the beach singly or in twos and leapt into visibility when they crossed the line from heat haze to nearer sand. Here the eye was first attracted to a black bat-like creature that danced on the sand and only later perceived the body above it. The bat was the child's shadow, shrunk by the vertical sun to a patch between the hurrying feet. Even while he blew, Ralph noticed the last pair of bodies that reached the platform above a fluttering patch of black. The two boys, bullet-headed and with hair like towel, flung themselves down and lay grinning and panting at Ralph like dogs. They were twins, and the eye was shocked and incredulous at such cheery duplication. They breathed together, they grinned together, they were chunky and vital. They raised wet lips at Ralph, for they seemed provided with not quite enough skin so that their profiles of blood and their mouths pulled open. Piggy bent his flashing glasses to them and could be heard between the blasts, repeating their names. Sam, Eric, Sam, Eric. Then he got muddled. The twins shook their heads and pointed at each other, and the crowd laughed. At last, Ralph ceased to blow and sat there, the conch trailing from one hand, his head bowed on his knees. As the echoes died away, so did the laughter, and there was silence. Within the diamond haze of the beach, something dark was fumbling along. Ralph saw it first and watched till the intentness of his gaze drew all eyes that way. Then the creature stepped from mirage onto clear sand. 
my friends were going to stop reading there so I can let you get on with doing your task. So the text is there on the screen. Perhaps you can rewind the video if you don't have the Word document close to hand. Um, let's go back to PowerPoint and finish up then. Um, yeah, the shell. So quote five adjectives from uh, what we just read that describe the thing. Find two quotations that compare how both Ralph and Piggy treat it. Ralph absorbed in the blowing and the status. Um, he's the one that tears a branch as he's collecting the conch. And Piggy was the one a little more cautious. I think he said, don't break the conch. And he uh, has more of a sense of reverence and respect, I think. Which character is the most mature, sensible and respectful? Well, you could have said, uh, I think Piggy's the most mature because he has the idea of calling the boys in the first place with the conch shell. Now, uh, so over to you, if you care for a quick summary, have a look at this. taking control. So there you are, five adjectives, a little list, two quotations, another slightly, well, a list three, really, and then um, who, in your opinion, is the most mature, sensible and respectful at this stage. See you next time.